Bless the Lord, saints of God. There is a new nature living on the inside of every believer. It is the nature of Christ Almighty, Jesus Christ, a new nature that lives on the inside of every born again, blood bought believer in Jesus Christ. There is a new nature. It is his divine power. It is his divine nature living on the inside of you. The old man has died. The new has come. Amen. You are a new creation in Christ. In 2 Peter 1 and 3 and 4 speaks of this. And we're going to read this in a moment here. First of all, I want to welcome each one of you as you're joining this morning, as you're joining this morning from various parts of the world. Welcome, welcome. It is wonderful to be with you all, uh, to bring the word of the Lord, to empower, to strengthen the believers in Christ all around the world. The word of God is our strength. The word of God, his spirit, his word is what we live by. Amen and amen. So God bless each and every one of you as you're jumping in online, watching live or watching the replay. We welcome you to this platform. You have a new you have a new nature if you are born again, if you are born anew from above, if Jesus is your Lord and your Savior, you have a new nature. It is the divine nature of Jesus Christ. It is his nature. It is the nature of God's power, his divine nature living on the inside of you because the old man died when you said yes to Jesus and hence he's made all things new. Amen. So you're a new creation. So in second Peter verse chapter one, verses three and four, it says he has given, it says as his divine power has given to us as his divine power, his divine power is his dunamis power right? As his divine power has given to us all things. So his divine power has given to you. His divine power has given to me. His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. This is what the word of the Lord says to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his glory and his virtue by which, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. These promises are exceedingly great. These promises are exceedingly precious. Exceedingly great and exceedingly precious, these promises. They have been given to us, church. They have been given to you. It says here, his divine power has been has been given to us. You know, you got to think about this incredible gift that he says, I have given to you my divine power. There's nothing you can't do if I've called you to it, right? So continuing in verse four, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these, through the promise, through the power, the divine power that has been given to you through these, not through yourself, but through these, it says that through these, that you may be a partaker of the divine nature. Come on, church of God. We need to be partakers of what's already been available for us to walk in. Just because it's available doesn't mean you're a partaker. So it says that through these, we can be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Are we a partaker? Are we going to partake? Are we going to partake of his divine power? Are we going to partake of everything that pertains to life and godliness through the knowledge of Christ who has called you? It says he's called you. So he's called you for his purpose, right? But the way that we walk in the divine power is we must be a partaker of that which is already available for us. Say it's purchased. His blood purchased it for me. His blood purchased it for you right? And so we have now been given exceedingly great and precious promises, not just great promises, but they're exceedingly great and they're exceedingly precious. Not everyone understands the gift of salvation because they're still spiritually asleep. But when you have understood because you've been called and chosen by God and you've answered that call, you become spiritually awakened to what was available to you the whole time, right? So not everyone understands these great and precious promises. And it seems trivial. It seems like nonsense to them, but their minds are still 
asleep. They're not spiritually awakened yet. But God has called you. He has called you to be a partaker of his divine nature. His divine nature lives on the inside of you because you're a new creation in Christ. Behold, all things that, you know, the, the old is gone and the new has come. We've put off the old man and we put on the new man, right? We don't need to try. It's, it's not like we have to try to live up to this new man. We put on Christ because the old man is dead. So we put on Christ. I am who he says I am. You are who he says you are. So you don't need to try to be like Christ. And this is important because you've got a lot of Christians that are striving to walk in a position that has been granted to them to just partake. Right? You don't need to just try to be like Jesus. You don't need to try to do that. Remember, we've already been given the mind of Christ and the identity of Christ. He has made you. He has made you in his image, in his likeness. You know, in Ephesians 2 and 5, it says, even when I was dead in trespasses, he made me alive with Christ, for by his grace I have been saved. I am dead to sin and I'm alive to Christ. I'm no longer a sinner, I'm a saint, because I'm dead to sin. I, I'm dead to sin. You don't die to your, you don't die to yourself because you're already dead. You, you don't have to keep on dying. That's what I mean to say. Like you've already died. You don't need to keep on dying. If you have to keep on dying, means you keep raising the dead man, right? We don't want to keep raising the dead man. We don't want to walk in the old ways. That person is dead. You're actually not a sinner anymore. You're a saint because you are dead to the ways of sin. Doesn't mean you never sin, but you're not identified or you shouldn't identify as a sinner. You should identify as a saint because you have a new nature in Christ, right? Right. So, so like, in other words, sin, like you in your renewed mind and your renewed state, you and sin cannot coexist because you can't coexist. One is going to take the lead. One is going to take the, one is going to be louder. One, one is going to be stronger. One, you can't coexist evenly. Right. So it's up to you. Who are you going to how are you going to live, right? And so we already know that we're going to live, we're going to be partakers. We're going to be partakers of his divine nature because it's already been given to us, right? These great and exceeding precious promises, right? So if you're dead to someone, if you're dead to someone, there's no association. Think about that for a moment. If you're dead to sin, there should be no association with sin. Like I'm not going to associate, well, you know, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. We are saved by grace. And we were sinners identified as before salvation. We're saints. And so now we're dead to the old man and we're alive to the new man. So if I'm dead to sin, there's no association. I will not associate with that dead man. You will not associate with that dead man, right? With that dead person, right? So either you're living from your flesh or you're living from your, your spirit man. And we are called by the word that we are to live by our spirit man. Right? We're to live by our spirit, man. we're to feed our spirit, we're not to feed our flesh. The old nature was handed to you by Adam, right? But Jesus has given you your new identity. And with this identity, you know, back again to 2 Peter 1, 3 and 4, with this identity, you have been given his divine power, which is his divine nature and he's given it to us he says to us so that all things that pertain to life and to godliness okay through the knowledge of him so that all things we can be a divine partaker of that nature glory to god so you just let go of your flesh that's right karen you just let go of that of your flesh you say oh no that that was a new day i'm not associating with that dead man anymore we will not associate with what's dead God has made you alive. He has made you alive in Christ. He says, you have my nature, partake. Partake of this new nature, partake. Live in the spirit, partake. I will be a partaker of God's divine nature. If it's a divine nature, that means a nature for miracles. That means a nature that is, is, it's, not, um, it's not of this world, it's divine, heavenly nature, renewed nature, powerful nature, nature for 
miracles, signs and wonders. That's your call. That's everyone's call. I just read it to you in 2 Peter, 2 Peter 1, 3 and 4, as his divine power has given to us all things. His divine power has given to us, not just to the few, not just to the original 12 apostles, not just to the disciples, but he has given his divine power to us. And his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness and that we would be partakers of his divine nature, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Because his promises, they're, they're precious, great and precious promises. Peter is such a great example. Peter changed and walked in the spirit. He walked in the divine nature. Amen. That's right, Karen. You leave fear. It's not going to rule you any longer. And that's it. We have to make it to make it fear. To leave fear. To, uh -uh. That's, I'm not going to associate it with what I've been with what I've been rescued from and with, with, with what is now dead. I'm not going to associate with dead things. I know somebody just received that. I could feel it in my spirit. I am not going to associate, I'm not going to identify with dead things. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This, uh, that, whew, whew, I can feel that one. Hallelujah. I feel like somebody just that really penetrated. I'm not going to associate with dead things. I'm not going to identify with dead things. If fear is something that consistently tried to overwhelm, overtake you, it's a dead thing. You're not going to associate with dead things. You're not going to identify with dead things any longer. Fear, anxiety, timidity, that's all the same. Honestly, it's the, re it's the same root. Lack, discouragement, that's a dead thing. Double-mindedness, that's a dead thing. Feelings of unworthiness, that's a dead thing. You're not going to associate with these things anymore, are you? No, because you've been given a new nature. You, you are now going to partake of God's divine nature. There is nothing you cannot do if he's called you to it. And he's called you to incredible things, great and precious things, great and precious promises. They're yours. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. My goodness, my goodness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, I bless those listening today and those listening to the replay. Glory to God. Look at what the Lord has done. Look at his incredible divine nature living on the inside of us. Look at how he takes an old something old, something something worn, something just tossed aside and says, I, the Lord, can make something beautiful with that individual. I, the Lord, will take that which has been discarded and make something great. That's what God has done for us. So Lord, thank you for what you have done. We will never forget your incredible tenderness, your incredible kindness, your forgiveness towards us. We will never forget your loving kindness, your mercy, your favor, your grace. New every morning unto us. We will never forget. And so therefore, we live to give you glory. We live to praise your name. We live to shout out hallelujah. We believe we are not ashamed of the gospel. We live to decree Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Hallelujah. And we will make our declarations strong because God is amazing. He is great. Amen. Glory to God. I bless you. Bless you. I bless your families. I bless your children to walk in the high calling of God. I bless your life. I bless that hands, the work of your hands, that God's favor rests upon you, that every place the soles of your feet take and step upon, that is your ground. It is solid ground. It is time. It is now. That ground is now. It's time for for you to walk in the fullness because of the divine nature of Christ in you. Amen. Father, and I thank you of anyone sick in their bodies. We just rebuke that sickness right now. We say absolutely not. That is not part of our divine nature. That is not part of the of the pressure, the great pressure.
precious promises that have been promised to us by the word of God. We cancel right now every form of sickness, disease. We rebuke it. We say it's under our feet. Pain goes right now. All forms, any witchcraft assignment trying to come against you, leaving you in a place of being afflicted. We cancel that right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. Father, I thank you that, Lord, when we put our confidence in you, our eyes are set upon you. Lord God, I know you said that we, I, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You are strong in the Lord and the power of his might. You are healed. You are whole by his stripes. You are healed in Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Bless you. Pray for your left ear. We decree over your Karen right now. For your left ear, healed right now in the name of Jesus. Dead things go right now. Sickness go right now. Pain go right now in the name of Jesus. I take authority over every ailment and every assignment that's come to plague you, Karen, in Jesus' name. will be uprooted by the powerful, powerful hand of God. We decree right now by the finger of God that thing is driven it is you have already been made well but Jesus is enough and we have one his divine power his divine power in you do not associate dead, dead things his divine power in you amen God bless you God bless you I will see many of some of you those that are able to come 10 a.m. today, House of Glory. You can come in person. We'd love to have you. If you cannot come in person today at 10 a.m., you can know that we're live at 10, so you can watch live streaming. Hallelujah. God is good. Miracles, signs, and wonders. If you're watching on live stream today, remember every time that you watch our live streaming, you are just as part of that service as if you were there in person. I believe that because backs this up, that there is no distance in the spirit. What God is doing in the house, he's doing with those that are in agreement watching the heart. So if you need that miracle healing, you are going to receive it. You need that powerful, you know, touch of God just giving you that Holy Ghost fire. You're going to receive it because there is an agreement in the spirit. Amen? So remember, you can write in the chat bar as you're watching and as you're listening to this are red. Amen. And we are praying for you. God bless you all. Have an amazing day. God bless you soon.